everyone, welcome to the Oaklers YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to get you set up for the holidays. Today, we're gonna to be going over two different patterns that are holiday ready. Last minute, go into the family's house, go into a Christmas party, need a gift, don't have a lot of time, we have you set. This tutorial also goes with the November Sally Tomato Oakla Roots collab mystery box. So you're gonna have all of the material you need to make these projects today if you are subscribed to that box. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be going over the Ronin, ooh, and also the Sterling, ah. Okay, if you can't tell, I am in the holiday mood. I am ready for Christmas. I am ready for parties. I am ready for a bottle of wine. So this month is so fun and it is so blingy. If you did not subscribe to the box, obviously you can definitely purchase these patterns. These are great scrap buster patterns and you can get pretty much everything I'm using today online. I will have links for everything down below. Let's first walk through the Ronin and then we'll walk through the Sterling. So I believe the Ronin was originally designed for like a water bottle, something that was going to sweat that you would take to the gym with you because originally the base of the bag was designed to have mesh so that if it did sweat, it didn't get all, you know, pulled up in the bottom of the bag. But it's the holidays and I don't use this. I don't go to the gym. So for me, it's a wine bag. So I got some of my favorite wine here, which is my Santa Margarito Pina Grigio. High five if this is your favorite wine as well. Um, and so you take your favorite bottle of wine, you just slip it in the bag. You can just pull on this little drawstring up top, kind of tuck it up a little bit. Do we have a crossbody strap for our bottle of wine? You bet we do. You bet we do. Because we're taking this to go, right? We're taking this to a party. And this is, I mean, look at this guys. Who wouldn't love this? Now, of course, yes, I have a bottle of wine here and I wanna show you things that will fit. So a bottle of wine, just a standard bottle of wine, a standard bottle of wine, not like my mother's size bottle of wine. She gets those like, what is it? It's a white Zinfandel and they're like, <laughs> they're like the big ones. Um, I don't think that's gonna fit in here. I haven't tried, but this is, what is this? This is just a standard, this is just a standard 750 milliliter bottle of wine. Okay, that fits perfectly. Now let's try this. This is some champagne. This is probably not the good stuff, but it's the cheap stuff and it works great with some orange juice. So I've got a bottle of champagne and yes, I can snug it in there. It is a bit of a tight fit, again, depending on how big the base of your bottle is, but it does work and there we go. So it fits your wine, it fits your champagne. Let's say you're not a drinker. You could actually fill this with all kinds of fun goodies. You could fill this with sweets, with candies for kids. You could fill it with stuffies. You could fill it with toys. Oh no, you know those, those holiday poppers? They're like the little tube and then they have little things on the end and you pop them open. You could fill a bunch of those in here and then bring them to Christmas dinner, bring them to the party and then let all the kids pick them out. So I love the look of this bag. I also love this right here. This is not just design. This is a little pocket. Put a gift card in there, put your Christmas card in there. I, I just, I, I think this is beautiful, I really do. And so we decided to make this bag as fancy as possible. So obviously the gold cork, the like forest green, you know, screams this. I also designed a custom tag for this bag. This tag right here comes from my favorite place to get my custom bag tags the Hardwood and Hide. It is exclusive to the box for now. I did tell Jade though that after the boxes have all been received and everybody's working on it, that if anybody wants to reorder them or order them for the first time, they're more than welcome to buy them from her shop. So if she has these in her shop soon, I will let you know. But I have seen so many people who are subscribed to the box ask about tags like this. And so I know a lot of you guys haven't taken the leap yet to try them out. So I wanted to make sure this month you had them in the box already and you could give it a try. So I, let me know what you think. These are beautiful tags. They're, they're printed on. It's just, they're absolutely stunning. I hope you guys love it. We also decided to have some leather cording on this bag and this beautiful little gold toggle, tongle. I'm not sure what it's called, but this little toggle here, that's a beautiful accent. We have beautiful gold grommet here. It's just so fancy. We have half inch wide webbing to go with the bag as well as hardware for the webbing. I mean, I just feel like a lot of stops were pulled for this. Like we really wanted to make sure this felt like the holidays and this got you in the mood. So if you're making this today, I encourage you put on some of your favorite music, get some cookies, maybe a small glass of wine and, and have some fun making this bag. One thing I want to note before we do dive into it though, is that there are a couple alterations to this. I'm going to show you two ways to make this bag. So this is the way per the pattern. This is a raw back pattern. So we do have 
the backside of the vinyl as the lining. We don't have a lining on this. You will need to use a faux leather or a vinyl or a cork, something that can have raw edges. Uh, same with the pocket, no lining on that. You could definitely add some linings, do some hacks to do that if you really want to. The one thing though is, is that the top, the way the pattern has it constructed, we do have the seam running from the bottom all the way to the top. And so you can kind of see it right here at the top. I knew that was something that some folks were gonna be like, was there, is there a way that, you know, like I don't mind the, the backside of the vinyl, I don't mind the raw edges further down, but right here I'd really like that to be hidden. We are going to walk through another way to do the top so that it is hidden. So let me show you that. So this is the second version we'll be going through in the video today. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to finish off these cords right here. But in the second version, we have the edges of the cord hanging out the front versus on this one, we actually have the center fold of the cord coming out the front and the edges are sewn into this back seam. This one, they are not sewn into anything. They just run along the top and then you can see we have a finished seam up here at the top, so no raw edges. So I am going to show you both ways to do this. I did also adjust a little bit on like pocket placement. I made a few adjustments and I will let you know, of course, throughout the tutorial where I'm kind of going off the pattern just a bit, um, usually just to make it a little bit easier for me to sew. Okay, so the Ronin is one of the things we'll be doing today. After that, we are going to make the cutest, quickest project ever, ever. We're gonna make the Sterling. Now the Sterling are just a set of four coasters. I'm just gonna walk you through how to make one of them. Obviously it's the same for all four, but if you do have the box, you will have enough material to make all four of these. Uh, these, again, they're just so stinking fancy. And I switched it up a little bit because I think the pattern wants this to be the top of the coaster, which is beautiful. If you have an embroidery design or some heat transfer vinyl or something really cool, maybe you are using sublimation on some sort of like white vinyl or something like that. You could definitely utilize this space right here to make it super fancy. But if you're just like, you know what, I don't want to do that extra work, but I still want that like pop, then just use a contrasting piece of material for the other piece. And there you go, pop. And now this is the top. That's how, that's how I'm using it. This would be the top of the coaster. And then we also have some really fun hardware here that goes on. These are glued on. I know we've used some of these things before where we kind of pinch them on. Uh, these ones are glued on, but if you're looking for the ones that pinch on as well, uh, I will have a link for those down below. I'll show you one that I made with other hardware at the end of this video. Again, super scrappy, super fun, super useful. I mean, just look at this. You make this, you take these, you put them in here. Can we fit all four of them in here? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Look at that. I put all four of my coasters in there. I grab my bottle of wine. I put that in here. And then look at this beautiful gift. A bottle of wine, a set of four coasters. It's super fancy, super pretty. It's another one of those things, the whole reason we like to make things for people is because many of us have a lot of material. Uh, and when we think of something, we're like, oh man, you know, cousin Jim, I think he would really love this like black, you know, vinyl that I have with like this like rainbow alligator, you know, metallic look on it. Like he would love something like that. So I wanna make something special for him. Uh, and this is what is so great about a pattern like this or about both of these patterns, honestly, is that it doesn't require a lot of time. It doesn't require a lot of material but it's something that's still really personal. And I, honestly, I think anybody who gets these would love them. Personally, I love them. I would love to receive these and I'm happy that I'm keeping these. All right, I know that was a lot of information, a very long introduction today. We are gonna get started. Don't forget that there are timestamps running along the bottom of this video. The timestamps are also listed in the description. So if you just go over here, there's a little arrow, you just click that and the description will expand. That's where you'll find the timestamps at the very bottom. There are also gonna be links for all the products I'm using today. I do believe that everything we are using is something you can purchase either from Sally Tomato, Heartwood and Hyde or elsewhere. So I will put as many links as possible down there. If you're interested in joining the Oakley Root Sally Tomato monthly mystery box, uh, you can go ahead and do that. I'll have a link for it down below. Just so you know, this month is done. It is sold out and we are done. So all of the boxes for this month have been claimed and they are already out the door. So if you do sign up now, you are going to be entered into the December monthly mystery box subscription. December's a good one, just wait. Every month is a fun one, but this is, they're all really good. You're gonna love December, guys. All right, guys, let's get started. So the pattern suggests you have about a half a yard of your main fabric. For us, that's going to be this green faux leather that is just beautiful. Uh, if you're following along with the kit for this month, then everything is already kind of like, the, the strips are cut down. You don't need a full half a yard, but we'll be using that for the main. You could also use it for the 
base if you'd like, but I'm actually going to use the contrast. So from the contrast, you're going to need about a quarter of a yard. It's going to be for the top of the bag and then also the pocket. And then again, you can use either the faux leather or the contrast for the base of the bag. We're also using the main fabric for the little tab to hold our D-rings in place. If you subscribe to the kit this month, you have this super special little tag that I did design and Jade from the Heart, Wood and Hide, she made it happen. Uh, it's called Spread Joy. I believe she will have these in her shop eventually, uh, probably before the holiday season, but uh, for right now, they're only available in this box this month. If you're opting for a crossbody strap, you can have your slider and your swivel hooks. That's what we're gonna be using today in the box. For the drawstring, you can create your own drawstring using faux leather or cork or you can use something like this. This is leather cording. We've used this a lot on the channel. I love it. So that's what we're gonna be using today. And then Sally Tomato was so great. They decided to include this cute little, this little spring thing. <laughs> I don't remember what this is called, but we're gonna use that with the drawstring. It is not necessary. You don't have to use it. I didn't use anything like this on the first couple bags I made, but if you'd like to, this is a really fun little item you could add. And then for the strap, instead of making our own, we're gonna use half inch webbing. It's this beautiful like, olive color. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with this and you can also definitely make your own strap if you'd like using any materials you have. I almost forgot to mention one of the coolest things of this bag is this grommet. So this is a beautiful grommet. It's going to be used with the drawstring, uh, but it's a snap grommet. You actually don't need any special tools, any special presses. We're going to just snap this on. I've only tested it a little bit, but I'm excited to play with it today. So you'll see I have two of everything today. Um, I'm going to show you two different ways to attach the top. One is per the pattern and then another way um, it can be done if you have a sewing machine that can accommodate it. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. So here's some of the other stuff. A good pair of fabric scissors. My favorite are the Kai 7230. Uh, a good seam ripper, just pretty much for the installation of the grommet or in case there's any problems. A one inch by six inch ruler is always handy. A lighter as well is great at just really polishing up the threads when you're constructing any bag. Uh, I like to have a couple different types of marking tools. I have a vinyl marking tool and an air racing marking tool. A stiletto, especially with the curves. We are doing a curved bottom today, guys. It's pretty narrow. You can do it, uh, but we do have that. And then I have this really fun holiday variegated thread. It's like red, white, and green. This is a Tex 35 weight thread and it works great on domestic machines. I have a Schmetz Microtex 8012 needle and then a Guterman thread for the bobbin. So I only use this variegated thread through my needle, but in the bobbin, I use the Guterman thread from Joann's and then lots of clips. So let's go through these pattern pieces. There's not a whole lot to this bag. It is a very quick sew. There is no lining. So this is a, this is a bag where the material that you use is going to be seen. The backside is going to be seen on the inside. Personally, I think that this looks beautiful. I don't mind this being seen on the inside, but that is your choice. You can definitely alter this pattern to include a lining. Uh, there's a lot of, this is a great building block pattern. It's great for beginners who are just getting into sewing curves, but also if you really wanna like zhuzh it up, make it fancy, you can do that. So we have a main panel here. We're gonna be using this faux leather. Again, use whatever you want. The thicker the material you use, the more challenging this bag is going to be. I'm just warning you, I was trying very hard to make sure that the material we used in the box this month was durable enough and sturdy enough to be able to be used over and over again and have a you know raw back and it would be fine, but also something we could actually sew without breaking a sweat. And then on the top of the main panel, we have this really fun contrast. We're gonna be using this gold splatter cork for that. This is going to be folded over like this in the end, so it's not as big a fold. It'll be more like this. This is also what's gonna house the drawstring. I'm going to be showing you two different ways to construct this main panel today. One way is per the pattern and you will see the seam running along the side of the bag in the end, all the way from the bottom to the top. Another way you can do it to hide that seam does require you to be able to use your sewing machine in a different way. So on my sewing machine, I have my table and then I have the arm and then the needle goes up and down over the arm, right? This arm right here is pretty thin. So when I'm making the bag, here's when I already made it with this other method, I can actually slide the bag around the arm and sew it just like that. Not everybody can do that. This can be a difficult thing to sew if you don't have an arm that accommodates that. So think about that, okay? Watch me make each version and decide which one is best for you. Either way, they look amazing. 
Then we also have a piece of contrast. It's going to be this little pocket. I'm going to change up the placement of this just a bit. The pattern does have it running right along the bottom edge of the bag. If you're new to sewing curves, this does add bulk, which can make it a little bit trickier to sew this bottom piece on. So we're going to, we're going to raise it up just a bit to prevent it from being in that seam, which is going to make it a little bit easier to sew the bottom. Then we have a smaller piece here. We're going to actually cut this in half. And this is just going to hold the D rings because again, this is a crossbody bag, which is just so funny. It's a wine crossbody bag. It doesn't have to be for wine, but you know, the holidays. And then we have a base piece. You could use the cork or you could use some of the faux leather, whatever you want. The pattern actually originally was written for like a water bottle. So they use mesh on the bottom. Uh, again, we're going into more holiday feel here. We're not really, I'm not using this for a water bottle. So I wanted to go with more, you know, fun fabric. But if you wanna use mesh, use mesh. Mesh will actually be easier to sew on the bottom than any of these other materials. Totally up to you. Have fun with this. This is a scrappy project. Have a lot of fun with it. So regardless of which way you're going to be applying the top drawstring channel, we're going to set it up the same way. So let's install this really cute little grommet. First, you need to find the midpoint along the bottom edge of your drawstring channel. So I like to do that by just folding it in half and you can mark it with a marking pen or you can use some scissors and then just trim right there. And now measure one and a half inches up from the center mark and mark a dot. So this dot is going to be the center of our drawstring. So when you're using this little grommet, there is a piece that goes inside the other one, okay? So find the one that goes on the outside. So this is like the outer rim, this is the inner rim, this one goes inside of it. I'm gonna take the one with the outer rim and I'm going to center it over that dot that I just marked. And then I'm gonna take my marking tool and I'm just going to draw by tracing on the inside circle, not the outside circle, the inside circle. I'm just gonna draw around like that. And then I'm going to grab my seam ripper and I'm just going to rip right in the center of that circle. That's all, just a little rip. This is just to help us for the scissors. Now I'm gonna grab my scissors. I'm gonna insert them into that rip that I started and I'm going to cut just outside of the circle that I marked. So I'm gonna go around and I'm cutting just outside that line. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but try not to make it too big. We don't wanna make it so big that the grommet just kind of falls right through it. Okay, so now I like to take the part of the grommet that goes in like that, and that's gonna be on the outside. So I'm gonna insert that through that hole that I just cut. And if you find your holes just a little small, go ahead and trim it down some more. So my hole is just a bit on the small side. All right, once you have it properly done, the grommet on the front should be able to have the inner circle poke through that hole. Take your back grommet and just push it over. So push it down with your fingers first like that. And I like to take the palm of my hand and just kind of almost like you're kneading, just gently give it a press. You can do it from the front as well. There we go. Now this should be nice and secure. I'm tugging on both sides. I can't get it apart. So that should be great. Isn't that cute? It's just like snap in place and all done. I love that. Okay, you can set this to the side for just a moment. All right, so before we attach the pocket, let's prep it. It's going to be long side up. So this is gonna be the top. If you have a directional print, make sure you realize where the direction is. On the back of the top, I'm going to mark a line that is three quarters of an inch down from this top edge. I'm also gonna mark lines that are three quarters of an inch from the sides and the bottom. And now you're gonna grab your marking tool and from where one three quarter inch mark is to the other three quarter inch mark on these corners, you're gonna mark a diagonal line. So it's going uh, like cutting across like a dog ear. So I'll show you. So I'm just lining up my two edges of my marks that I made previously and just making a diagonal line just like this. So you'll have it going across. So do this for all four corners. All right, and this is just a technique we've done a few times with stuff like this. I'm trying to reduce the bulk in these corners because we're gonna fold all these four edges in and then sew them down. And I just don't like really bulky corners. They're a pain to sew. So I try to I try to reduce it a bit. So I'm going to sew down my sides first and then I'm gonna sew down the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna reduce the bulk in the sides. So what I'm gonna do is over here on the side, see how I have the top of this diagonal mark I just made? I'm gonna have it go all the way down to the middle and then I'm going to have it cut down like this. So in the end, I'm making like a little side of a house. I have it going from that right three quarter inch mark down to the center of this little square down here and then straight down. Then I'll grab my scissors and I'm just gonna cut along that straight up mark and then across the diagonal. So in the end what happens is when I fold this edge in by three eighths of an inch, you see how it goes off here and then when I fold the bottom in later by three eighths of an inch, 
it will cover this corner and I won't have a bunch of bulk. I won't have a space either, but I won't, it won't be really bulky. So that's the bottom right corner. For the bottom left corner, we're gonna start on the left side at the three quarter inch mark and go down the diagonal towards the center of that square here and then straight down. So we have our other side of the house, just like that. I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut along that vertical line and then along the diagonal line. All right, for the top, it's gonna to be similar. We're gonna start on the three quarter inch mark over here on the right side. We're gonna go up the diagonal line and then straight up once we get to the center of that square. And then I'll just cut this down. Now, if this is just too confusing and it's too much extra work for you, don't worry about it. You don't have to do this. I just, I prefer it. Then over here on the left, again, we're gonna be on the left side of our diagonal line, following it up to the center of that block and then straight up. And then we'll cut this corner as well. Okay, now we're gonna grab some clips and we're gonna fold the long edges in to meet that three quarter of an inch mark. So what we're doing is we're folding it three eighths of an inch. So we're gonna go all the way along the sides. Just use clips to hold it in place. I'm gonna do this for both sides. And now we're gonna go top stitch along both of these edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have this top stitch, turn it over and now we're gonna fold down the top and the bottom edges. Now, if you are going to keep the bottom edge of this pocket in the seam that goes along the bottom of the bag, then you do not need to fold down the bottom edge. Just leave it open like this. However, I am going to be raising it up. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And you'll see when we fold the top down, it's just a flat fold. I just like the way that looks. If you have another preference, then let me know down in the comments. So now let's go top stitch along the top and bottom at a quarter inch seam allowance. So now we have our cute little pocket. If you have any little thread pigtails, you know, like the little pieces of thread just sticking out like a spike, uh, I like to melt them down. So I just grab a lighter and just melt them down. It just takes a second and it looks so good. Now, if you'd like, before we attach this, you can definitely add your bag tag to the pocket. I think that looks so cute like that. Uh, I'm gonna wait though, I'm actually gonna attach it to the main panel in just a minute. So now take your main panel. Remember it is wider than it is high. So if you have a directional print, think about that. This is the top and this is our pocket and our pocket's gonna go portrait style or landscape. You do you. You know what? You can make this pocket however you want. You want a nice little wide pocket? Do it like that. You want a tall pocket? Do it like that. I'm not here to judge. First, what I wanna do is mark the midpoint on the bottom edge of my pocket. No scissors for this if you're using a finished edge like me. If you're going to be attaching it to the bottom edge of this, then you can go ahead and cut that because it should not be folded down. And then we're gonna find the midpoint along the bottom edge of our main panel. For that, I will just fold it in half and clip. Now, I'm going to measure one inch up from this bottom midpoint mark. And then I'm just going to lay my pocket down centered. So we want it centered one inch above. Unless you're following the pattern and you have a raw unfolded edge down here, then just scoot it down and line it up right along this edge. I'm gonna grab some washi tape. So I have Sally Tomato washi tape. You could grab any sort of fabric tape. I just wanna hold this pocket in place while I take it from my table to my sewing machine. All right, now I'm gonna top stitch my pocket in place. I'm gonna go along the side the bottom and the other side at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch well at the very top here. Even if you're not raising your pocket up, you also need to make sure you base stitch the bottom edge in place. So what I like to do with pockets like this, just to make sure they are very secure. You can see I have the top threads here nice and long and I have the bobbin threads nice and long on the back. I am going to pull all the threads to the back and then knot them. So I'm just gonna pull on my bobbin thread here until I see a little colorful loop, which is my top thread. I'm gonna use my stiletto to get in there and pull the top thread to the back. And then I just do a triple knot. It, it just helps to keep it a little bit more secure. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then once I have them knotted, just cut down those threads and then just gently 
melt the threads and that just seals them in nicely on the back. There we go. So now our pocket is attached. So now before the next step, I do want to attach my tag. I think I'm going to attach my tag centered above my pocket. I got this cool tool. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, this is from Heartwood and Hyde, the same folks who made the tags in today's kit. Uh, and this is a guide to help you with placement. So there are little dots and each guide is based on the size of your tag. So if you buy one of these guides, just make sure you get one that's for the same size tag you're using. So I can just use this guide to mark the corners for my tag and then I can just place it over that and I'll know it's centered and straight. So let's try that. I'm gonna line this up with my pocket. I think I want my tag to be centered and one inch down from the top edge. So I can just measure this along this top edge here. I know that this is one inch, the little dots are one inch down from there. I'm gonna grab a fabric marking tool and I'm just gonna mark in those dots. So when I lift this up, I just have four little dots here, that's perfect. And then I'll just grab a small piece of double-sided tape and attach that to the back of my tag. You could also use washi tape here if you'd like. I like to put it on diagonally, just like that. And then using those four dots, I can just line up the corners of my tag with it. Here we go. And now I know it's centered and it's straight. And now I'm just gonna top stitch around all four edges of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then just like I did with the pockets, I just pull all the threads to the back and give them a triple knot just to have a nice finished look on the front. All right, there we go. The bottom panel is almost done. We're just gonna attach the little D-rings and connectors. So before we attach them, just to make this look really nice, let's go ahead and top stitch along both long edges of this little piece at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you can use cork or vinyl for this piece. Uh, honestly, I think the cork will be a little bit easier to top stitch because the vinyl is a bit stretchy. So since it's so skinny, you might fight with it at the machine. So you can use cork for this piece as well. You can use whatever you want. This is a very small piece of material. Now we're just gonna fold the strip in half and then we're gonna just cut it in half like that. So now we have two little pieces. And let's fold these pieces around our small D-rings. I'm gonna use a clip on the edge. Obviously the vinyl or whatever you're using should be right side out. If you haven't already, let's mark a midpoint right along the top edge of our main panel. Now grab your ruler and measure three inches to the left and three inches to the right of that middle mark and just mark a little line right on the top edge. And then take your little connector with the D-ring and just center it over that mark and have it overhang just a scotch. Uh, the pattern suggests a quarter inch if you wanna do a little bit less than that, that's okay. You can do anywhere between a quarter to an eighth of an inch. We just want these D-rings to overhang a little bit. It makes it easier. Um, if you line up the raw edges right with this edge, it's possible that they'll kind of slip and you won't catch one of the edges. And then of course you're not gonna realize it until <laughs> the bag's all done. So by having it overhang just a bit, it ensures that we're gonna catch both the edges. All right, once you have these, these are six inches apart from one another, three inches away from the middle mark. We're gonna base these down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm gonna show you how to adjust the top casing the way the pattern suggests. After I show you that, I will then show you how I attach it another way. So we're gonna kind of assemble most of the bag except for the bottom, first one way and then another way. So you're gonna grab your top contrast, it already has the grommet, your drawstring, and if you have the kit and you have this cute little clip, we'll have that as well. First thing we want to do, if you're using this little tool here, is push both ends through the different circles. So to use this, you pinch it shut and you the holes kind of open up and then you can stick your drawstring through those holes. I would say this is definitely best if you're using some sort of leather cording. If you made your own drawstring, this might not work because it will be more of a flat shape than a round shape, which is what we want here is a round shape. So I'm just gonna pull it pretty much all the way through. I have a little bubble here. And then we're gonna take both of these raw edges and we're gonna insert them through the grommet and pull them to the back. Make sure that they're not crossing over one another. Let's flip this around. So now if you remember, our grommet is one and a half inches up. So I'm just gonna measure one and a half inch up from the bottom edge on the sides and just mark along the seam. Now this can get a little tricky, so bear with me. I'm gonna take one of my drawstrings and I'm gonna pull the end all the way to that mark and I'm gonna line up the end with that mark and I'm gonna clip it in place. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other drawstring. Just match it up with that mark and clip in place. And now what we wanna do is sew these down so they don't come undone, which is a little tricky because this is a circle. So my suggestion is that an eighth of inch seam allowance, 
you just go back and forth, back and forth, maybe three or four times over this. Uh, we want this to stay in place. All right, so these are nice and attached. Those are not going anywhere. When I flip this over, you see, we can kind of tighten up this. Isn't that cute? Don't pull it too tight because we don't want it to scrunch right now. We need it to stay flat, but isn't that, isn't that cute? That's adorable. So now we're gonna take our casing and we're gonna fold it wrong sides together. Make sure you're lifting that drawstring out of the way. We don't wanna accidentally sew it down here. So we're gonna fold it up in a hot dog style. And we're just gonna clip along this long bottom edge. Again, just checking your drawstring so it doesn't peek through this bottom seam. All right, so again, I'm just gonna kind of pull and make sure, you don't wanna pull it tight. But there we go, it's all up there. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to. I'm just gonna baste along this bottom edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now grab your main panel and lay it right side up and grab your casing. And you're gonna lay your casing right side down. Make sure this stays out of the way. So pull it out and line up these raw edges. So right side down means the side with the grommet. The side with the grommet is facing the right side of the bottom. And we're just gonna line up the raw edges on the top here and clip together. And now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Again, make sure you're always checking where that drawstring is. It should be pretty out of the way, but just in case, don't sew over it. You may wanna use a zipper foot for this part to get around those D-rings. Once you have this sewn together, you can flip it up and push the seam down. Seam doesn't wanna go up, don't let it go up. Push it down. Now, you can just leave it like this if you'd like, or if you're feeling like your machine can handle it, you can top stitch along this edge. Either way is going to look great. If you're like, you know what, that was thick enough. I don't wanna go over these D-rings again. You do not have to. I'll show you, this is the other version we're doing, but on the other version, I don't top stitch around the top edge and I think it looks beautiful. I do like that bubbled look. This is not a zipper here. It's okay if it's not top stitched. But I am going to top stitch this one just to show you. Since it is so bulky and since this material is a little stretchy, I am going to increase the tension on my machine and I'm gonna go closer to a four millimeter stitch than a three and a half millimeter stitch, probably like a 3.75 millimeter stitch. So I don't know if you noticed, but when I'm working on vinyl, especially top stitching on top of vinyl that has a little bit of a stick, maybe a little bit of a stretch, this one isn't really sticky, but it does have a bit of a stretch to it. My trick is I increase that seam allowance because it's going to kind of naturally decrease because it can't move like it wants to. So it's going to be smaller than what I say it is anyways. And then also I keep both hands on either side and gently but firmly, I keep it going under the needle and I go slow. Some material can be challenging. You don't need a fancy machine to sew on it. I just want you to know that if you can get to know your machine and take it slow, you can pretty much sew with anything you want. So once you have this built like this, now we're going to take the long sides and we're gonna fold it right sides together and just clip along this edge. Now we're going to sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch really well at the beginning and the end, especially up here because this is the end of this up here. We're not gonna top stitch it anymore. I like to backstitch over this connector and also over where I can feel my drawstring. And then again, really well up here. I'll actually backstitch a couple times up here and then I'll just backstitch all the way about halfway down almost to the seam and end there. This seam right here can be very bulky. So if you need to, you can use something called a hump jumper or a ruler helps. I just lift up my presser foot. I'm gonna put my ruler behind the back of my presser foot. So I'm kind of raising it up a bit. And then I'm gonna gently move forward. And if it comes undone, then I'll just lift it up again and keep going. Go very careful over these thick, thick seams here. Once you've gotten mostly on the seam, you don't need the hump jumper anymore. Backstitch if you need to here. It's a little thick right where you go over the cords. Just go over it once and then we'll go over it again later in the closer to the seam. Go all the way up to the top. Back stitch here. Bring it back down quite a bit. And then I can move this and so I can go over these cords again, just closer to the seam. There we go. Okay, so next we're gonna put the bottom on. I'll show you that in just a moment, but I do wanna show you that this is the end of the construction for this bag. So this seam is visible on the inside. I think it looks great. I don't mind it at all. I haven't had anybody who I've 
shown this to have a problem with it, but if you do want to kind of hide this top seam, not the bottom seam, but the top seam, I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next version. Okay, so let's talk about the alternate way to do the top. So we have our bottom panel just like we did before. We have our top. It does not have the drawstring installed yet. So what we're gonna do is we're going to close up the edges of each of these separately, and then we're going to attach them together. So I'm going to close up the side here of my main panel using clips. My main panel is right sides together. I'm gonna to do the same thing with my top panel. I'm gonna pull those short edges right sides together, and I'm going to clip them together. And now I'm gonna take both these to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew along both edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, making sure I backstitch at the beginning and the end for each of these. So now take your main panel and just put it to the side. And for this top panel, what we wanna do with this is we wanna fold it now wrong sides together. So you kinda of have to fold it out, like you're gonna turn the whole thing out, but not quite. So I like to spread open the seams, match those up first, and then clip together, and it looks like a bit of a mess. That's okay, you'll get it, you'll get it straightened out. You just kind of have to tuck in there. I'm gonna go around this edge, clipping the raw edges, wrong sides together, and just flattening it out as I go. You could add the straw string here if you'd like. If you don't wanna try to get it in there later, that's up to you. You might find that easier. I'll show you how to do that. So in this case, the drawstring is not going to have its center sticking out, it's going to have the end sticking out. So what we can do is we can just kind of thread the drawstring in here all the way around. And this is nice because you have this opening here and if you need to, you can kind of open it up and then pull the drawstring further along. So we're just gonna pull it all the way around, make sure it's tucked in at the top and then reclip as you go around. It will seem a little bubbly. That's just because it's on a curve, that's okay. Once you kind of straighten out a section, if you see that it's nice and flat, it's not bubbly, then you're fine. Okay, so lots of clips here help. So I'm gonna base this together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is where it gets a little tricky. See what your machine can do. I mean, if you can base this without having to take the table off, that's fine. If you have a skinny arm like I do, then you can just wrap it around the arm and baste it down like that. It's gonna be a lot easier. Make sure these stay out of the way and just go slow with this. Okay, so I just wanted to test out and see how that would go without taking the table off and just top stitching from the inside and it went great. So we'll see, let's try the next one. Let's see what happens. So to attach these two pieces together, I'm going to keep my main panel wrong side out and then I have my top piece here with the grommet right side out. Because what I want is grommet together with the main panel. I'm just going to kind of push this down inside just like that. I'm gonna match up the seams. So I have my seam of my main panel. I'm gonna to try to spread that open. My seams for here are already spread open. Yes, it's bulky. This is kind of one of the cons for this method is that it is a bit bulky. And I'm just gonna go around and clip these two edges together. Okay, and just double check, kind of feel around, reach inside if you need to, and make sure those D-rings are pointed down. They're not flipped up towards the seam because we don't wanna hit them. I am going to switch to a zipper foot here. And now I'm going to try to sew from the inside. I'm gonna sew from the inside of the bag at a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. If you want, instead you can take the table off and you can wrap this around and sew from the outside at a 3 8 inch. Uh, but I do wanna try it because I've only done it with the table removed. So let's see if we can do it. And if so, then that would be great. This is a great alteration for everybody. Just go slow and again, pay attention to where those D-rings are, a zipper foot is helpful. Honestly, that was not that bad. So now what I'm gonna do is just pull up that top panel and then we're gonna let the seam go down. So you can kind of finger press that seam down. I'm not going to top stitch this. To top stitch this, you would definitely need to be able to wrap it around your arm because you have to get a good amount in there. Uh, I'm not going to top stitch this though. I think it looks fine without it. So now we pretty much have our bags in the same position. Just one has a closed up seam on the top and the other doesn't. So Whichever way you decide to do this, 
I think it's going to look great. But I'm going to continue on with the patterns version. The remaining step of adding the bottom is the same either way. So now what you want to do is take your base piece and now I'm using a four and a half inch circle which I think is a little bit bigger than what the pattern calls for but I found that it just worked a little bit easier for me with this um, but you could actually increase it to four and three quarters inch if you want or you can decrease it to the pattern size but what I did is I marked the midpoint on all four edges so fold it in half like this mark the midpoint on the both sides and then use those midpoint marks to fold it in half again and mark midpoints we're marking quarter marks for the bag, we have the midpoint already with the seam, and we should already have a bottom midpoint mark here. Just pull those together, matching up the seam and that midpoint mark, and then mark the sides. So you have quarter marks. And now all we have to do is take our bottom circle and place it so it's right side down, facing the right side of the bag, which is on the inside. Take one of those midpoint marks, flatten out that seam, and clip these together. So the materials are both right sides together. So we're gonna take that midpoint mark together and then we're gonna grab the opposite midpoint mark, clip those together. And then once again, we're gonna do the quarter marks. So you have four marks, just make sure they're all lined up. I find that's just, just, just a little, makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so now I'm gonna stand this up so that the circle's like a little bowl and just go around, flattening it out a little bit and adding clips. And I like to add lots of clips to curves. This is one of your first times doing curves. This is a pretty, this is a pretty tight one. Um, so give yourself some grace here. But with the material we're using, it should be okay. The thicker the material you use, the harder this is going to be. I used some pretty thick quilted vinyl on my first attempt and it was pretty challenging. I found this thinner material though. It's much easier to work with. All right, so I am able to smooth it all out nicely without any problems. However, if you find a lot of bubbling, what you can do is take your scissors and just ever so gently just cut into the main panel, so not the circle. Just cut about an eighth of an inch, just little slits around, little tiny ones, and that will help the main panel spread out so that it doesn't bunch up around that circle just every inch or so or closer together, wherever you find it helpful. I always like to keep the scissors next to me at the sewing machine. And I'm just, if I'm just really struggling, then I use the scissors to help. So now we're gonna sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Typically we like to sew it with this side, this gusset or the main body panel side up. You could try to sew it with the circle side up. Figure out which one's easier because this is going to be a little tricky since this is raised up so high, but you should be able to, if your vinyl is not too thick, you can just move it to the side and go around like that. That's how I'm going to sew it with the main body wrong side up. But if you want to try sewing it with the circle side wrong side up, go ahead and give that a shot. It just might be a little bit trickier because it kind of bunches up underneath. So on my machine, I know that this very edge of my zipper foot is three eighths of an inch. So I'm not looking at the tick marks on my plate. Instead, I'm just making sure that the top and bottom materials are lined up and that it's riding right along the edge of this zipper foot. Just go nice and slow. And I just focus inch by inch. I just kind of take my stiletto to pull the material so that it matches up and then just go around. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. I'll show you. I, I was, it's kind of, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of all over the place, kind of like somebody's shouldn't be driving, <laughs> but I'll show you. Let's turn it out. A lot of times these tight curves we do like that, they look worse on this side than they do on the front. So give it a chance. So let's flip it out. Oh, this is looking so pretty, isn't it? I haven't made one yet. This is my first time making with this material. I'm so excited. So I used the cork for the bottom. There we go. Okay, so you can see how there's a lot of like straight bits here. I'll show you how to fix that. But so far, this looks beautiful, doesn't it? Who wouldn't love this as a gift? Okay, let me show you how to deal with those little straight bits. Let's flip it out just enough. I just wanna look at the bottom. I don't have to turn the whole thing back out. Now, what you can do is cut but I don't always like to do that with thicker material. 
So what we're gonna do is go around this whole bottom and just cut slits into the seam close to the thread, but we're not going to cut the thread. We're just gonna get close to it, making like a little hula skirt. All right, so once you have those clips all the way around, let's just turn this back right side out again and take a look at it. You can see now when I push out this bottom, it gets a lot more rounded and less straight. Oh yeah, that looks so, so good. So now all we have to do is make the strap that goes with it. So just grab your strap material and your strap hardware. And the first thing we're gonna do is attach one end to the slider that goes in the center that makes it adjustable. If you're using material like I am, you're gonna wanna melt down the edges so that they don't fray. And all we have to do is put one edge up over through the top middle bar and then back around. If you wanna use rivets here, that's a great idea. I love using rivets, but since they're not included in the box, I'm not going to use them. Instead, I'm just gonna do a couple lines of stitches right along here. I'm gonna probably try to do a little tiny box uh, just to hold this in place. I'll keep my zipper foot on so that I can get pretty close to this bar. Let's see, I have this overhanging about an inch. So I, I don't have it double folded, just fold it over once, hanging over about an inch. Okay, and this is so small that if you're using thread that somewhat matches this color, you can just kind of go nuts. Just, just You just want to make sure it doesn't rip, you know? So you want to make it reinforced. Uh, if you have little tails, once again, always just melt them down. So now take your strap and lay it so that the folded over edge that you just sewed is facing up like this. Flatten out your whole strap. Grab your swivel hardware and attach it so that the swivel is going down. And then just put it back on. If you haven't yet melted down the other end, go ahead and do that. We don't want any of that stuff. Now again, keeping this nice and straight, once again with the folded over edge facing up, the swivel facing down, I'm going to straighten this out and I'm gonna to come to my other raw edge, fold it up so that it's gonna go against that folded over edge, up through the slider, pull it out a good amount, and then down over that middle bar and out the other side. So when I pull on my swivel, I have my swivel out like this, my slider up, and then I have my raw edge over here. And then all I have to do is wrap my raw edge through my other swivel and pull it down. You can pull it down half of an inch, one inch, however much you want. And just like we did with the slider, we're just gonna make a nice little rectangle here to stitch this in place. All right, and then to just final cleanup, get those threads tucked in. Oh yeah. So now we can just add our swivel onto here. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. I actually haven't finished a strap yet on the ones I'd been making before. Oh wow, look at that. What a cheerful bag. I mean, you could put anything in there, wine, champagne, things like that, of course. You could fill it with candy, you could fill it with art supplies and toys. I mean, it's just so cute. And I love these little details we have. Look how stinking cute. Oh, I hope you guys love it. I really do. All right, let's make the next project. So the sterling is one of the cutest, quickest little things to make. We're gonna use generally the same other stuff, supplies that we used for the Ronin, thread, needles. This is very, very easy. This is a fun kid project. Definitely let the kids get involved and pick everything out. For this though, we're gonna have two different pieces of material. I like to use different pieces. Uh, you don't have to though, they can be the same material. But you're gonna have a top material and then a bottom material. Uh, and you can actually, it can either be like this or like this, you'll see. Um, so I like to have two different pieces of material. And then I like to use a cut of firmer interfacing. So there's a lot of options for that. Just anything nice and firm. Uh, you could do it without any interfacing and then it would be kind of like a more floppy coaster. But if you do want it to hold that structure really nicely, you're gonna need something firm. And then these little metal corners, you can get these. I mean, these Sally Tomato has beautiful options, but these are so fun to play with. So the pattern is for making five of them. If you're doing the kit, the kit includes all the material to make four because we wanted to make this a really great gift set this month. So if you wanted to gift somebody four coasters, a bottle of wine, and you know, the Ronin bag, holding it like it would just be beautiful all together uh, I'm just gonna show you how to make one of them because it's the same and it's so fast you're gonna love it you're gonna love it so if you want to add some sort of a heat transfer vinyl or embroidery applique anything like that go ahead and do that now get these prepped this is uh if you have a if you have an embroidery machine and you have a special someone if you did like their monogram on these how beautiful how fancy uh, I'm just gonna leave it as is because honestly the material is so pretty that I don't think it needs it 
So flip over your main piece, which is your larger square, and let's look at the back side. From each corner, you're gonna measure one inch. So one inch down, one inch over for all four corners. So I just made little tick marks right along the edge of the material for those one inch marks. And now what you're gonna do is take a small ruler and make a diagonal line from each tick mark. So just right across the corner of each of these corners. Now grab your scissors and cut along those diagonals that you just marked. So if you have an adhesive firm stabilizer, you can just center this over the larger piece with the diagonals cut like that and adhere it to the exterior. If however you're using something like I am where it does not have any adhesive, then you'll need to grab some double-sided tape and let's just put double-sided tape on one side first. So I'm gonna go along all four edges and then I'll just remove the paper from all that tape just so I can stick this down onto the larger cut of my material. Okay, so just make sure it's completely centered and now you can grab some more double-sided tape and add it to the top of your stabilizer. So this is the other side that we did not add tape to yet. Again, the reason we're doing this is because both sides of this stabilizer are not fusible. So now remove the paper from this tape that's on the top of the stabilizer and then grab your smaller cut of material. So for me, it's that cork and just center that over the stabilizer. So it is just slightly smaller than the stabilizer. There we go. Now we're gonna grab some clips and we're gonna fold over the larger cut of material, wrap it nice and tight, and then clip it in place. So do this for all four edges and you should see at the corners, if they're not lining up like they should, just kind of, so it might actually be easier if you start with the corners, getting those lined up and clip there and then go around the rest of it. Now don't worry too much if the corners don't look perfect because we will be covering up some of them with the corner hardware. So whenever we sew this down, remember your bobbin thread is going to show on one side. So if you need to change out your bobbin so it's a thread color that you like, go ahead and do that now. You can try to decide which side is the top, which side is the bottom. I like this side to be the top. I don't know, I just, I really like that contrast and material. You can see I'm just kind of straightening everything out. There we go. So now you can flip this over and you can top stitch 3 8 of an inch around all four edges if you decide this is the top part, or you can flip this over and you can top stitch 1 8 of an inch from this raw edge on the inside, which is what I'm going to do. So it's totally up to you. Um, and just do that all the way around. Okay, so now we can add our corner hardware, which is completely optional. And there are other types of hardware out there as well. I'll have a link down below. There are other corner hardwares where when you add them, you just pinch them on. Um, so those are a good option. These ones do not pinch. You will have to glue them on. So I'm gonna use Beacon 301 glue for that. So what we're gonna do is just add a little bit of glue right into this corner hardware. You could probably use E6000 glue as well, or some sort of a fabric glue. You could use hot glue. So I have it in there and then I'm gonna have it so that the rounded shorter edge is on the side of the contrast. So it's up to you, just try to be consistent with each corner. And we're just going to slide this on and put it in place, there we go. Now I'm gonna just repeat that for all four corners. Look at that, look how fancy that looks. So here it is on one side, here it is on the other side. Both sides look so, so nice. So now all you have to do is let that glue dry and how cute is that? You can make a set of four of these and include it with the Ronin as a little gift or you could make one for each, you can make one of these for each kid's teacher. I mean, there's a lot of options. This is a really fun, quick little project that you could have a lot of fun with. And it's, a, it's one that you could get the kids involved with, which I always think is really fun. All right, guys, what do you think? Which, which version did you try? Which version did you try? I will tell you when I was first testing out, tweaking the top of this, I was so worried because I felt like the only way you were gonna be able to do this is if you had a sewing machine that had a long enough arm, so where the needle goes into the arm down here, you take off the table and it needed to be long enough and narrow enough to be able to fit into the bag so you could sew it like that. And I was worried because I know a lot of people's, while they might be able to take off the table, the base part where the arm is is pretty wide. So I'm so glad today that as we walk through this together, we saw you don't need to remove the table at all. You can definitely make this 
using the right material. So a, a lighter weight faux leather, a cork, use the right material and it shouldn't be much problem to sew it like this. So let me know which version you tried. If you kept, if you stuck with the pattern and you had the seam go all the way, or if you switched it up like I did. But I did want to show you how to finish off these edges if you did the second version like I did, because you can see these are not sewn into the bag, which is how I like my drawstring. I don't really like it sewn into the bag. I am always worried that if I pull too hard on it, I'm going to pop it out of the seam. And then what, you know, so I like it just kind of running through it. But if you did it like I did, you have these two tails here. So you're going to grab your little toggle switch. And just like we did on the other side, we're going to pinch it nice and tight. Enter one of your drawstring cords into one side, pinch it and enter the other one as well. There we go. So then pull them both like that. And if you want a nice finished end to these, all you have to do is wrap it in a little circle. I know it's hard to do like this <laughs> and then just pop that end right through that circle right on the edge and just kind of work it with your fingers. It doesn't have to, the knot doesn't have to be really far down. You just want it to be nice and tight. So I'll show you. So you see how that looks. That's a nice finished little knot on the end. So I'm gonna do that for both of these. So that's one version with two little knots. You could actually also, I'll show you another option you have here. I gotta show you all the options. I want you to know you can make this exactly the way you want it. You could also take both ends together and do the same thing where you just make a little loop, keeping them together, and then take both of the short edges and push it through that loop. Here, I know you can't see it, but I'll show it to you. And you see, and now they're knotted together on like that, which I think I, think I actually prefer that look. I like that the most. I love that. So lots of options here, lots of fun options here. Um, and I just, I'm just so pleased with this cork and faux leather combo. I think that this just, this is just the holidays, right? Uh, this is great for this time of year. So I really hope you guys love making these as much as I do. These are they're just so fun. They're so scrappy. They're last minute. They're perfect for Christmas music, family, friends. Uh, one thing that would be cute too with the sterling is if you do have kiddos, man, what, what if you had some sort of a vinyl, like a light colored white or a pastel vinyl or something like that, and you use that as either the contrast or the whatever you're gonna have as the top, um, and then you get some fabric markers, some vinyl markers, and let them like color on it, and then and they can make it for their family members. But So give them something to do at the dinner table, you know, playing and coloring and stuff like that, and then as they're creating it at the dinner table with everybody, they can kind of gift it to grandma, gift it to mom and dad, you know? I don't know, I am always trying to find ways to bring a little bit more magic to family gatherings, um, and especially with little kids, you know, they get, they, they get kind of bored when everybody else is not bored. And so having some little task for them to do while they can still be with everybody, I don't know. That's magic to me. That's magic. So let me know if you make these. Let me know who you're gifting them to or if you're keeping them. Let me know any fun stuff you're doing to them. How are you How are you changing this up to make it your own? Uh, if you do post your photos of any of these on social media and you want to tag me, I'm at Oaklers. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I think I'm on TikTok. I am on TikTok, but I still don't really know the Tiki Taka yet. Uh, but Instagram and Facebook for sure tag me over there. I want to see your version if you made this from the box Please also tag me. I hope you guys love it. I really do let me know what you think before we end I do want to show you a couple of the versions I was trying out before I did that one So here's one I made with this quilted vinyl and then this beautiful rainbow vinyl uh, This one was more challenging. It was more challenging because I used thicker material so if you're used to working with thicker material, then you know you know what your abilities are. So this is more thicker material. Again, some of that fun tag from Heartwood and Hyde. This is a screw-in grommet. So if you're looking for screw-in grommets, those are also an option. So that's one version I did. Here's another one I did with some cork and faux leather. The cork and faux leather is all from Sally Tomato. Um, again, one of my bag tags from Heartwood and Hyde. And this is when I was testing out this over here. And I wanted to show you I made a matching sterling to go with this one just with the scraps I mean I just had scraps from this and I used it to make the sterling which I thought was fun but these corner clips here these ones are off of Amazon and you can actually pinch them so I would add a little bit of glue to them and then you put them on and then you pinch them with your fingers and that just you know kind of gets them so that they can wrap more so if you don't have a perfectly 90 degree angle when you make this you can kind of like push this down and no one's gonna know you know what I mean I hope you're having a great day have a fantastic rest of your week if you're getting started for the holidays we got this. This is our time to shine, right? <laughs> Get out there and make something. Bye, guys.